All right. It appears that the new Linux Mint 13 KDE Edition or release candidate, yeah, just came out. Thanks, everybody, for notifying me about that. I had my email literally filled with requests to look at it. So I downloaded it, and you're going to get a first look at that with me right now on Spatry's Cup of Linux. All right, folks, let me tell you what. I've been running Linux Mint XFCE Edition now for uh, hmm, 48 hours, maybe. And I'm absolutely loving it. I've been sitting here pulling all the knobs, trying to break the levers and everything, and I'm loving it. Uh, I just tried the uh, new Kazam screencaster. I know it's been out for a while, but I haven't been able to use it properly in Arch. This is working like a charm. I'm able to do uh, all of my screencasting and everything without any issues. And I can also uh, record from more than one source, which is great. That's been something that's been on my wish list, and it's something I could never quite figure out with FFmpeg. Also, thank you, everybody, for all of your comments on my music that I'm doing on the show. Uh, I plan on uh, creating some additional soundtracks and that sort of thing. Uh, currently, um, I'm still working on just the correct amount of balance, plus I also purchased a new microphone uh, so that we can have a better sound quality on the show as well, and so that should be arriving within a week. Uh, don't expect any unboxing videos, though, because uh, I can't stand those on YouTube. Ew! Look what I got! Unbox this thing and show you what it does. And, blah, blah. and half the unboxing videos, they don't even review the darn thing. Ugh. I hate them, so I don't do unboxing videos here. All right, well, without further ado, let's have a look at what you guys requested. I had a lot of requests for this today, and of course, I'm talking about Linux Mint KDE. I've already reviewed Linux Mint 12 when the KDE version came out. I don't really see many differences with this other than it's got a uh, newer kernel. And that sort of thing. But you guys wanted to see it, so I'll give you a brief overview of what you're getting. Now, of course, the new KDE 4.8 is probably their best edition. It is the customizer's dream come true. But it also requires a little bit heftier of a processor. Some of you may disagree with me on that. Uh, but the thing is, uh, I'm pretty firm in that. You should probably have a dual-core processor if you're going to run on this. Uh, run this or just have a really, really fast single core processor with a lot of RAM because this one is a little bit of a hog, folks. All right. You'll see here, uh, I already clicked the new activity. You can add a panel. You can add widgets, activities, shortcut settings, desktop settings. So quick launches to all of your settings and that sort of thing if you need them right here. And you'll notice it is acting a little bit laggy here with the mouse. Uh, and that is to be expected on a single core. We are looking at the 32-bit version in VirtualBox with full, uh, with full compositing and uh, guest editions installed. All right, and then of course another uh, little panel toolbox here that you can click where you can add other widgets and items to your panel. Uh, nothing too fancy here. Uh, your date and time right here. And, of course, your networking interface, your uh, USB interface, volume control, and then a clipboard monitor is located here. All right, and then, of course, you have quick access to the Dolphin file manager, bar none, probably the best file manager that I have seen for, uh, for an aesthetically pleasing file manager in Linux operating systems. Uh, it is a little bit top-heavy, though. Uh, but it is pretty, it's very nice for organizing your files. On my Arch Linux setup, I am using Dolphin as a secondary file manager with PCMANFM being my primary. And I'm using PCMANFM as my primary uh, in um, Linux Mint uh, 13 XFCE. And I'll eventually go into showing you guys how to set that one up if you decide you want to use it. Then, of course, a show the desktop icon. Now... If you right-click on 
your little uh, mint menu here. I selected um, switch to classic style. It comes with the application launcher style, which is this, and I think it is absolutely ugly and revolting. I won't use it. So I prefer just a classic menu style. So you can switch to it that way. All right, and then you have everything neatly organized and categorized. If I were to install this on my system, the first thing I would do is uninstall everything I'm not going to use and then load the packages that I want on top of it. Now, one thing I've noticed with the software center that this comes with, sometimes when you try to remove applications using the software center, what's going to happen is it doesn't always take them out. So I recommend using the Synaptic Package Manager for adding and removing packages uh, to and from your system if you're going to use this. I feel that it works better now, uh, but that's my personal results. Maybe some of you have had better results with the Software Center, but that is how I see it. But no Linux distribution is perfect. As uh, most of you know, uh, I had my little Kavits with Arch Linux, but I haven't given up on it. Okay, so you get a number of applications, a number of graphic applications here. Notably, you get the GIMP uh, and a few other uh, applications here. You get the full LibreOffice suite, which includes its draw program. You get document viewers and uh, image viewers, all that good stuff that you need for the Internet. Of course, you get the Firefox web browser. You get uh, Copete Instant Messenger, a KTorrent. Personally, I think Deluge is the best, so if you want a good a BitTorrent client, definitely try out Deluge. Maybe I'll even do a review on it one of these days. Okay, and uh, you get a number of multimedia applications with this, suitable for playing just about any multimedia file that you want to find out there. So that's always good. As I mentioned, you get the LibreOffice suite with this. Uh, a number of settings to get the most out of the system. And the thing is, I really like how... KDE uh, centralizes all of those settings for you. We'll take a look at that in a moment. Uh, system tools to get the most out of the system as well, including uh, additional drivers and a backup tool for you. Okay, and then a number of other little util utilities are located here. Uh, if you're watching in high def, you can pause the uh, video and you can read the lists because I'm not going to sit down and read the entire lists on these things. But let's go ahead and go into the settings manager here. Okay, and as I stated, they have a nice central location for your system settings right here where you can pretty much change everything about this system and literally make it your own um, from uh, desktop, uh, from changing your desktop to the workspace behavior, virtual desktop, screen edges. I mean, it is all here ready for you to explore. And then, of course, you get the uh, wonderful Dolphin File Manager that I mentioned earlier, and I just want to show you how cool and sleek this looks. Uh, I use this in Arch for managing all of my videos with the thumbnails and that sort of thing. Um, Right now, by default, all the folders are kind of small and spread apart and that sort of thing, but you can customize that. You can give it any kind of look that you want. I think that's a little bit better, especially, uh, you know, uh, you can, I mean, the possibilities are endless and you can change the views on this as well. Um, this is eating up quite a bit of CPU, as you can see, my mouse is... Uh, not behaving here uh, as nicely as I like. But the thing is, you can uh, add extra panels if you want to to get additional information on things. Okay, so now you have a, an extra, you know, information. I mean, there are so many different tweaks that you can do with this. You could literally get lost in all the settings that you have available at your fingertips for the KDE desktop. And it is built on Linux Mint. And uh, Linux Mint, I have always known for releasing a good quality Linux distribution. And uh, I really like how they've taken the uh, core of Ubuntu and built on top of it. I can't sing them enough praises. This is, a, this is now the number one, or has been for some time, the number one uh, distribution that is looked at on distrowatch.com. So, and for good reason, because they've 
they've done their part to give the end users exactly what they want. And there are now several different flavors that you can choose from. So if you don't like the KDDE desktop that we're looking at right now, that's fine. There are other choices. You can have the Mate desktop, which is the fork of GNOME 2. You have the Cinnamon desktop. And then, of course, you have the XFCE, which is what I'm running right now. I personally like that one the best out of all of the offerings by Linux Mint. But there is a flavor just for you. Once again, Linux Mint team, Clement Lafarge, excellent work. Thank you.